Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving a hexic equation with complex numbers. On my other channel, CyberMath, we already did a hexic equation. You've probably seen it, right? If not, please check it out. And this will also be another hexic. I didn't plan to do two hexics, hexics on, on the same day uh, because it will be too hectic. Anyways, it just came up. So. Why did I call this a hexic equation? First of all, because if you make a common denominator, you're gonna get z to the sixth power plus one equals two z cubed, right? And then from there, we can proceed. Let's leave it at that because we'll probably get back to this later. And I'm going to be presenting two methods. We're gonna be looking for z values, right? This is z cubed plus one over z cubed equals two. You could probably come up with more than three methods for this problem and just writing that hexic gave me another idea, which we can also talk about maybe as a third method if I don't forget by the end. I usually forget these things, but I'll try to remember, okay? So first method, we can write the sum of two cubes as z plus one over z cubed, like using the binomial theorem, right? a cubed plus b cubed, minus three ab, that's gonna give you a three times one because z times one over z times z plus one over z. You can also memorize this as another identity with z plus one over z, because these are really special expressions in algebra. You're gonna see a lot of competition problems built around this expression and this idea. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and see what we can do from here. First of all, we know that this is equal to two, nice. And now we can go ahead and call this something, like how about omega, or should I say w? Let's call omega. Omega cubed minus three omega is equal to this. And what does that mean? It just means that this is a cubic equation. And guess what? It's somewhat special. Because if you look at the coefficients, the sum of the coefficients isn't zero, but I notice one and negative three added together. One plus negative three gives me negative two, which is this coefficient. So it satisfies the odds equals evens, which means Negative one is a solution. You should definitely know that, right? Two important pieces of information regarding polynomials. Great. So now we know that W equals negative one is a solution. And I know some people don't like the way I break down a polynomial and they are a big fan of polynomial division or long division. I'll do that. That's fine. I don't mind. It's a good method. W goes into W cubed, W squared times. If you distribute W cubed, or oh, did I say W? Never mind, I use them interchangeably. And now we're just gonna have to negate this expression. Of course, draw a line, and there's gonna be a minus sign, there's gonna be a minus sign, w cubed is gonna cancel out. I'm just used to saying w, that's why. And now, w into negative w squared, negative w times, distribute negative w squared minus w, negate, plus, plus, draw the line, add them up, you get negative two w, bring down this, and you'll see exactly negative two times. Of course, that needs to happen because we know that there's no remainder, right? We, do we? Because we found the other factor. By the way, how did I go from this to W plus one? You might be like questioning, right? Obviously, the factor theorem tells us if W equals negative one is a solution, then W plus one is a factor. That's called the factor theorem. Look it up if you're not familiar. And the remainder is zero, of course. Now, we were able to factor our expression into the following w cubed minus 3w minus 2 equals w plus 1 times w squared minus w minus 2. Guess what? This quadratic is also factorable uh, into w plus 1, w minus 2 by finding two numbers whose product is negative and whose sum is negative 1. You know the drill, right? We just did it today. So we're using that fa uh, skill again and again. That's why it's important for you to know that this gives us a perfect square which is perfect and now you know what that means we have a double root double solutions negative one is a repeated root does it matter no not really but uh, we're gonna have that's why we have two solutions seemingly two solutions but there should be three right so let's go ahead and after setting this equal to zero of course we get w equals negative one as well as w equals two let's go ahead and set w equal to each one of these I'm gonna go ahead and do this, but I wanna do the two first for some reason. And two looks a little better for me, okay? So I'm gonna call this equation number one and this one number two, all right? Let's go ahead and refer to them as number one and number two. 
The first equation gives me z squared plus 1. By the way, these are equal to 2. So z squared plus 1 equals 2z, or not 2z. <laughs> Did it work? And then put everything on the same side. And then you'll be getting z minus 1 squared. Yay, awesome. And from here, we're going to get a single solution. Again, a double root, which is fine. You know, 2 wasn't a double root, but now it's a, 1 is a double root. So z equals 1 is a solution from here. We're looking for z, remember? And number 2 is when we set uh, the z plus 1 over z equal to negative 1. If you multiply everything by z, you get z squared plus 1 equals negative z. And from here, you get z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. Does that look familiar? If you're doing complex numbers, you should definitely, definitely know this. This is basically gives you, this equation gives you the cube roots of one. And we just talked about cube roots of unity in the other video, right? Wow, there are so many similarities. And trust me, I didn't do this on purpose. That just happened, okay? Anyways, from here, z becomes negative one plus minus the square root of three i over two. In other words, the cube roots of unity, of course, except for one. But one is comes from equation number one. So one is from one. Make sense? Great. So now we got all the solutions and we were looking for z values. But wait a minute. We only get like three solutions. Wasn't this hexic? Okay, we'll see what happens. This is hexic, but a special hexic. So there's a lot of repetition, right? Obviously. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is pretty interesting in my opinion uh, I mean you're gonna let me know which one you like better but um, usually the second one I like better than the first one why do I do the first one because no pain no gain sorry about that okay so now we have z cubed and I want to set it equal to u because why not right that simplifies the problem u plus 1 over u is equal to 2 and as you know uh, we're gonna get u squared plus 1 equals 2u and again if it's your birthday Happy birthday to you. Okay, congratulations. Now from here we get u minus 1 squared equals 0 and u equals 1. And u equals 1 is a single solution but double root. Let's set it equal to z cubed back substitute, right? Because u is z cubed. And then from here we get z cubed equals 1 but let's write it as e to the power 2 pi and I. Oh man, so many similarities with the other video that we made. Please check it out. You'll see that. So now n is equal to 0, and of course, I'm supposed to divide both sides by, I mean the exponents by 3. If n is equal to 0, then we get z equals 1. If n is equal to 1, we get z equals e to the power 2 pi i over 3. If n is equal to 2, we get z equals e to the power 4 pi i over 3. And guess what? Those will give you the exact same solutions, negative 1 plus minus the square root of 3i all over 2, and 1 is just 1. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.